America to Syria. The US and NATO nations continue to practice what our next guest describes as international gangsterism. He fought in the Vietnam War and ever since has fought against neoliberal interventionism by NATO nations right around the world. Joining me now from New York City in the US is the founding executive director of the US Human Rights Network and 2016 USA Green Party vice presidential candidate Ajamu Baraka. Ajamu, thanks for coming on Going Underground. Why are you calling on the US to pull out of Syria? Well, thank you for uh, for inviting me. Um, we are we are making the call, like many people around the world, uh, for the U.S. to cease its intervention into that nation. We say see that as a uh, intervention that is illegal um, and immoral. There is no objective right uh, that the U.S. has to uh, to intervene into Syria, and certainly not to quote unquote punish uh, another government and their leaders. So we say this is a continuation of the kind of, of, of not only uh, immoral, but uh, illegal um, international gangsterism uh, that we've seen uh, the U.S. authorities involved in for quite some time. And so we say now is the time to draw a clear line, a clear uh, people's line, if you will, and say U.S. out of Syria, U.S. Cease the, the the illegal interventions around the, the around the world. Uh, cease the international uh, gangsterism that has undermined uh, international credibility when it comes to international law, uh, and created a very dangerous environment in which um, many many states believe that they can operate above and outside of international law and morality. The leader of the opposition here does call it legally questionable. Why do you believe Presidents uh, Trump and Macron and Prime Minister May bombed Syria before UN inspectors were allowed to investigate the alleged chemical attack uh, in the Damascus area of Syria? I think that the, uh, the U.S. Was, has the objective of, of establishing a, a justification for a, a, a remaining in uh, Syria. And, of course, they needed the political coverage from... Uh, their two, uh, their two partners, if you will, um, and so uh, I think both Great Britain and, and and France have their own particular reasons. But you know, those three states are part of the of the uh, what what we refer to as the um, uh, axis of domination, the U.S. NATO uh, EU axis of domination. So uh, these three states operating as they do, uh, these three states that are a part of the um, Western European colonial project uh, have operated together before, um, and it's quite clear they have objective common interests uh, in the Middle East. So it wasn't surprising, as unfortunate, uh, and, and we're glad that there are significant numbers of people in all of those uh, nations uh, that have expressed their opposition. Ironic that, of course, your call for the U.S. to leave Syria was echoed by President Donald Trump shortly before the airstrikes. Well, of course, and, and, and that was what appeared to be the, the rational response from, uh, from his administration. But it's quite clear that there's a very powerful forces inside uh, the U.S. state uh, that see uh, uh, a withdrawal from Syria as being against objective U.S. interests. Uh, and almost like um, clockwork, uh, then we have this so-called chemical attack. Uh, in Syria, and then the uh, response from uh, the Trump administration and the other two uh, poodles, if you will. So uh, it's quite clear that there is there is real uh, tensions and even contradictions uh, within the U.S. administration. Um, and uh, Donald Trump, um, who appears to be uh, always in charge, uh, is quite clear that he may not be as in charge as people might think. I'm sure the, uh, well, they have. The Elysee Palace and Number 10 have denied that they're poodles of your president. But uh, why are you drawing parallels to, the, uh, to this situation in Syria, to the uh, Anglo-American-backed Israeli bombardment of Gaza? Well, we, we, we clearly show that uh, there is uh, hypocrisy here, that if the concern is supposed to be uh, to protect human life, uh, if... If the activities of the of the Syrian government that supposedly uh, was involved in this chemical attack uh, was so egregious that it required uh, international intervention, then we raise a very simple question: As the Israelis are involved in uh, shooting with 
live ammunition, uh, unarmed protesters uh, murdering people on the uh, Gaza border, uh, one would assume then that there would be calls for some kind of uh, interventions, uh, sanctions, um, uh, UN Security Council resolutions uh, when it comes to, to Israel. But clearly, it appears that uh, Palestinians are killable, that there is a different um, set of, of, of morals involved in these two situations. So we say that basically there has to be one standard, one uh, standard of, of, of morality, uh, one standard of international law, and that uh, no nation, no nation state should be above the law. So we point that very simple um, uh, uh, example out uh, to show that basically there must be other kinds of interests uh, and motivations involved in this intervention than uh, supposedly concerned for international or concern for humanitarian uh, interests. The Israeli government denies it's deliberately targeting civilians and is, uh, says it's conducting inquiries into uh, footage that seems to purportedly shows uh, the IDF killing civilians. MPs in this country routinely uh, tell the British public that Gaza is run by terrorists. I understand you've been to Gaza. Uh, what was your experience there? Well, I've been to the West Bank. Uh, they wouldn't allow me to go, go to Gaza. Um, and I can tell you, though, even the horrific conditions um, uh, in the West Bank uh, indicates that the conditions in Gaza are, uh, have to be even more horrific. Um, we, I, I've always said that if people had a chance to really experience life uh, under occupation, um, um, uh, people in the West, that is, um, th the support for the Israeli state would uh, evaporate uh, in a moment. Uh, it is absolutely uh, incredible, absolutely uh, inhumane. So the very fact that uh, people live in a, uh, in essence, an open air uh, concentration camp in Gaza, still living in the rubble from the last uh, Israeli attack um, in that strip of land, uh, and that now they are attempting to raise their issue uh, to the attention of the international community by marching to the borders of that concentration camp uh, and reminding the international public uh, that, you know, they are uh, under occupation, that there is land there that they still believe belongs to them because they were kicked off the land, uh, and then they are met with live ammunition. Uh, it is absolutely incredible that that kind of activity is allowed to, to continue without uh, massive international outcry. But let me say this. There is massive international outcry and opposition. Unfortunately, though, uh, we don't see it as intensely as it should be uh, in the West. And, of course, Israel has been uh, bombing... Syria, and uh, there certainly seems to be a rapprochement between Israel and Saudi Arabia, uh, which, of course, is bombing Yemen with uh, British weapons. How would you characterize your president's uh, relationship to Saudi Arabia? Uh, it's consistent with the relationship of, of the previous administrations, that basically the Saudis um, are part of the U.S. strategic uh, uh, um, uh, plan for uh, maintaining control of that very important part of, of the world. Uh, it is a, a state that provides billions of dollars to the U.S. arms industry, uh, and therefore um, it, it, it gets the support from the administrations, uh, even when it is when that government is involved in a clear violations of international norms and standards, uh, be it in Bahrain or uh, the current uh, vicious uh, war being waged uh, in Yemen, uh, they get a, they get a pass. Uh, but again, it shows the, the hypocrisy of Western opinion and the hypocrisy of, of policymakers, both in the U.S. Uh, and throughout uh, the Western European theater, uh, that this kind of relationship continues, that uh, the Saudis are not, uh, uh, don't find themselves in the dock in The Hague uh, with the other war criminals, uh, along with people like uh, Tony Blair and George Bush uh, and Rumsfeld uh, and now Barack Obama. It demonstrates that um, the Western commitment to something called international law uh, is, is a fraud. So we say that uh, all lives are, in fact, precious, and that the lives of Palestinians, the lives of people in Yemen are just as precious as the lives of people in Syria and the lives of people on the, in, in the, uh, the ghettos of Detroit uh, and the south side of Chicago. We say that basically what we see happening globally uh, being executed by the Western powers led by the U.S. is just a flip side of the kind of repression that we see uh, domestically 
in the U.S. And that's why we are building and attempt to rebuild an anti-war movement, anti-militarist movement in the U.S. to confront uh, these contradictions. And yet NATO's military has failed to install proxies, arguably, from Iraq to uh, Libya. Do you think, though, <clears throat> it may yet work in Venezuela, which will see presidential elections next month? Uh, we have seen that uh, these attempts to try to um, uh, circumvent the will of the people have not been successful. Uh, they can, in fact, put in place repressive governments uh, that can be uh, installed and in place for a, a few years. But uh, it seems that the trend in the last uh, 30, 40 years has been uh, a trend going toward uh, establishing more and more progressive governments uh, that are committed to upholding the objective human rights of the people. That, but do you uh, think they'll be successive in, successful in Venezuela, the, the world's number one oil superpower, arguably? No, I don't. But it's, very, it's a very dangerous situation because we don't believe... I'm, I'm really concerned whether or not they're going to allow the election to take place uh, next month. If that takes place, if the election takes place, then basically we're going to see uh, the situation become more normalized in Venezuela because the, the opposition has to then come to terms with the fact uh, that you have a, a Maduro government in place for six years. Ajama Baraka, thank you. My pleasure.